Welcome to The Truth Podcast. I'm your host, Hani Rambod, and I always say I have a special guest, but this one is a very special guest. Many of you were giving us suggestions on who should have, be on the podcast and who we should have on, and many times this woman has been mentioned, but uh, finally convinced her to come on the podcast. So welcome, my beautiful wife, Miss Nas, aka, I don't know, do they call you more Miss Nas now or Fairness? Miss Nas, because my real name is very challenging for most people. <laughs> so, yes, Miss Nas, I'm very happy to be here. Um, it was a, a long nervous. time coming. A little nervous, yes. yes. I do a bunch of content for social media, and I'm okay with that. This type of stuff I have never done before, so it's brand new, and I'm kind of nervous, but very excited. Awesome. Well, a lot of you don't know, uh, Farron is, uh, a.k.a. Miss Nas, used to compete. So uh, when I met her, she was getting ready for a show uh, with a good friend of mine and actually my client at the time, uh, Charles Ray Artie. Yep. And Ray had won the 2005 Nationals. I had two people in the show, him as well as uh, Bill Wilmore. Bill ended up winning the overall. Ray ended up winning the light heavyweight class, going on to eventually compete in the Olympia in the 202. And he told me one day, Hey, I have a client. Let me uh, introduce you. She's Persian and she likes to compete. I go, Persians who like to compete and she's a woman. Whoa. Yeah, back then that was very, very rare because yeah. there weren't a lot of competitors, yep. a lot of female competitors, and definitely not a lot of Middle Eastern women. I yeah. think there was only one pro, Dina El Sabah, uh -huh. and she was Jordanian or? No, Kuwaiti. Kuwaiti. She was Kuwaiti. And that was it. Yeah. You know, because in our culture, back, especially back then, yeah. this is like, 16 years ago, right? Yeah. So Well, they still don't allow women to compete in a lot of the region in the Middle East. Yeah. Right. I believe there might be some in Dubai, but really Iran is not happening. Kuwait, it's not happening. But, you know, I'm trying to think of Kuwait. I don't, I still don't believe they, they compete, women compete in Kuwait. But, um, so a lot of them that do compete even now, obviously don't compete there because yeah. they don't have the platform. So, we have a lot of Iranians from Canada and the U.S. Uh, who live or live abroad anywhere outside. And obviously Dubai has become a hub. A lot of women, a lot of influencers and competitors that are women are in Dubai. And so fast forward, you guys started getting ready for the show. Um, <laughs> we'll use this. Well, there's a, there's a, a good story behind uh, a good. I mean, it was bad and then it became better. But <laughs> about when you were competing and, and Ray was coaching you and uh, Ray was making some mistakes and, you know, not to call Ray out, but obviously he, he didn't work with a lot of uh, you know competitive women. And then I didn't want to coach you. I, we were just dating. And then eventually I took over. And uh, Good thing is we were able to fix some things and you won. And I did. Yeah. I won my class and I also won the overall sword, which... Which Jelani Teeper on stage, uh, for those of you that don't know who Lonnie Teeper is, he writes for Iron Man magazine or did while the magazine was still around and also emceed a bazillion shows back in the day. And he was the MC. and he told you to stab me or try not to stab me with it. Yep. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. But she <laughs> still the, has. Where's that sword? It is in my store in Campbell, California, Nutrition Palace. It's hung up over my in-body machine along with the degrees that I have. And um, it's just sitting there, shiny as ever. Never been used on Hani. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> but Lonnie, thanks for the idea. You uh, see it in her head, but uh, which is funny because I did talk to Lonnie about that the other day. It's the first time we caught up in a while. And uh, he asked me, he goes, hey, did she end up using that sword ever on you? <laughs> but the good thing was you did, you won your class in figure uh, the, at the NPC San Francisco, as well as winning your, uh, the overall mm -hmm. in figure. And obviously figure is completely different. I'm trying to remember, was it two, did they have two suits then? Yeah. So back then there was yeah. no bikini, there was no women's physique, there was no other divisions like the wellness. Um, there was only fitness, bodybuilding for women and figure. And it was a two piece round and a one piece round. So we had to get two suits. We had to get a one piece suit. Yes. And then we had to do a bikini, which is now it's all bikini. Um, and we had the same poses, you know, quarter turns, all that. But yeah, it's changed quite a bit from when I was competing 16 years ago. And for those who are going to ask, why did they have two suits back then? Well, the reason was one was supposed to be for your shape and silhouette, not your conditioning per se. Um, and that was the one piece suit. And the 
two-piece suit was obviously kind of how it is now, where it's the overall physique, conditioning, balance, um, structure. And I feel that when they had more divisions, then they were like, okay, look, we don't really need this other uh, uh, round. And it was ungodly expensive too because Very. those suits were just bedazzled yep. and they had tons of crystals and all these things. Yeah, and, and you had to buy two of them. So yeah. it was very expensive and, you know, I, I'm i actually happy that they got rid of it, obviously with the volume and the number of competitors too. Yeah. It's a time issue, so yeah. Yeah, I don't even think they had men's physique back then. They had nothing. Nope. They were like... Bodybuilding, bodybuilding for men. That's that it. was it. That's it. Nothing else. And now you fast forward and... <laughs> Speaking of Nutrition Palace and, the, and what you're doing now, like when we met, we met at the USA mm -hmm. and what happened was when you fast forward and you look at bodybuilding, you've been to every single Olympia yep. since, since we started, since we started dating yep. and then all of the shows that you've been to and many times you get to see a lot of the athletes before their show and, and being there. And I, you know, this year, um, it was particularly kind of you know i think stressful but cool mm -hmm. because now we have cam and you know cam's 10 years old and he's become a bodybuilding fan totally and uh <laughs> he's like a little mini celebrity running around because a lot of people know who he is and uh he, and he's in the he new mega fit he's in he the is. new mega fit meals um uh ad that you know they it was a post and then it became an ad and then you know, make sure you eat mega fit so you don't become mega fat. Yep. And so I said that to him once, and then now that's his line. Yep. And uh, he said, Dad said that to me. He didn't use it, so it was a missed opportunity, so I took it. That's what exactly his Hey, words. you know what? He could have that. <laughs> but it was uh, it's funny because I believe we were in the kitchen, and I don't remember if it was Derek. Who was, no, who was, it was around? No, Seabum was there okay. and Calvin. Uh -huh. And you guys were doing some kind of social media for, for MegaFit oh, in it was, our kitchen. It was, yeah, because yep. we just launched, we're, we just now launched the new kebabs. And we did the honey kebabs, which are basically a steak kebab, a chicken kebab, with, uh, and then a ground beef kebab that's kind of like a kubide. And that is specialty. They're doing a limited uh, run of these uh, kebabs uh, for mega fit meal and we were doing a post about it to be able to do some videos to for the release and then he obviously is a ham so he likes to get cam the ham i call him <laughs> and he likes to get on on the video yep. and then he he was like he was hilarious he's hilarious when he found out i was going to be on the podcast he's all mom can i come too <laughs> <laughs> you, if he didn't have school today he would be yeah. here right now sitting in this seat oh, so comment below if you want to see cam on the podcast we might have to put him on here because he has his opinions and many, believe me many, many opinions. opinions he last week we had the nationals here and we had sandy jim Mannion, uh, big steve weinberger and it's hilarious because he's going to them and he's like having them break down the hottie versus Derek. Yep. And he's going over through it and through the pose. And he's 10, right? Yeah. But he grew up in this. I mean, even when you were pregnant, you were at the Olympia with him. And then every single Olympia after that, yeah. he's been there. Mm -hmm. So he gets to see firsthand. He gets to see. And then he turns around after somebody poses in the living room of our house. It could be whoever it is. Or, you know, or he sees somebody um, at the gym. And then he'd be like, Dad, are you going to give him some salmon? He looks like he's a little flat, but I don't think you should increase his carbs. <laughs> and that's it's him. just like, that's that's my son, yep, totally. <laughs> 10 years old, totally. you know? So I don't know. Maybe he's going to start doing some prep pretty soon here because he does have a very good eye for it. He really does. He does. And he could start doing prep for the middle schoolers <laughs> <laughs> that he's a part of yeah. here in Texas. But um, so, yeah, so we come from an entire family of, of bodybuilding. So we had so much in common and obviously if anybody knows, and, and I've talked about this many, many episodes, it really becomes a part of you. This is, it's like, um, it's like a religion in a lot of ways. It, it really becomes a part of you when you have people who back you and who support you, who understand this lifestyle. And the reason why, reason why I kind of parallel it with religion is because what happens is if you don't have a good support system, if your husband or your wife or your mom and dad, if you're a teenager coming up, if they don't support you, it becomes very difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible, especially with the parents, because you kind of uh, end up be kind of running your own lane at some point when you start growing up. But your life partner 
or somebody who is your girlfriend or boyfriend, it makes it really difficult if they're trying to sabotage what you're doing. And in the past, um, I've dated girls that were outside the industry and it was really, really difficult. And you would think that, hey, look, maybe balancing out your relationship and say, hey, look, somebody outside the industry is going to be better because they're going to be able to not want to talk about work, right? Yeah. When you're coaching, or, you know, because you hear me say it sometimes when we're talking about bodybuilding or Cam starts talking about bodybuilding, sometimes I just want to not talk about bodybuilding. Yep. I'm just like, hey, Cam, did you start playing, you know, the new Call of Duty? Did you start like, I, I yeah, don't want to talk about the subject. it. I changed the subject. And, but when you are mm-hmm. fundamentally don't have people who support you, it becomes very difficult especially if this is a part of your career, whether you're a coach or whether you're a competitor, whether you're an influencer, any of those things are going to make it very difficult if you don't have the right partner because it eventually they either intentionally or unintentionally try to sabotage you because they're just, they don't like it or they turn around. And I remember even when I was competing as a natural bodybuilder and I would date somebody who was not in the industry and I would turn around and say, Hey, you know, I got to be able to eat my chicken and rice and this and that. And I'm like, just, can't you just have it some pizza? Can't you just turn around and yeah. do it? What's wrong with you? Yeah. You know? And you're like, no, I'm competing. Well, I yeah. just think what you're doing is kind of like not really fun. Yeah. You know, you don't look like you're having fun. I'm like, this is not about fun. This is about a sport that involves discipline, a lifestyle that involves discipline. Totally. Well, why do you have to get up in the morning? And I just want to touch on that too. You got up in the morning mm-hmm. and when we were dating, you got up in the morning and you would get up at like 3 a.m. Yep, 3 a.m. Go to 24 hour fitness on Coddle and I would do an hour and 15 minutes of fasted step mill and go home, get all my meals prepped. I was working as a chiropractor at the time and I had about a 30, 40 minute commute. So I had to prep all my meals, get to work, started seeing patients at seven till noon. And, you know, chiropractic is on your feet and, you know, like you're just very physical. So I did that 12 to 2.30, I would have a little break. I'd go to the 24 hour fitness, get my lift in, take a shower, come back. I'd see patients again from three to seven drive back home to Gold's Burnell and do another hour and 15 minutes of cardio. And that was my day, you know, my whole day, every day for 16 weeks of prep. So, yeah, I mean, when you don't have someone who hasn't done it or hasn't lived it and knows the importance of meal timing, getting your lifts in, all that, because it's not just a career that you've built around bodybuilding. It's definitely a lifestyle. It's all consuming. It's not like, hey, you clock in nine to five and then you're home and you're, you know, dad or husband or whatever. It's all day long, 24 hours a day, nonstop, you know, even when you're not competing with your athletes as well. So it's very challenging to have someone, I would think, especially in this career, um, to not have someone that understands it. Yeah. And when you started competing, how old were you? Um, I started competing when I was 24. And I was in chiropractic school at the time. Right. So, and undergrad, Mm -hmm. you you, you trained some famous people. (laughs) (laughs) So I went to UCLA um, from 18 to 22. And And you did finish. And I did finish. Yes. Because a lot of people. School or finish what? (laughs) No, finish school because people always go, oh, I went to USC or I went, whatever. I mean, not USC because most of these guys don't go to USC, but in our industry, they'll say, hey, I went to college. And assuming somebody is going to think that, hey, you finished. A lot of people don't finish. No, no, I finished. I got my BS in physiological science, Mm -hmm. which now is kinesiology. So I was very much interested in the body, the human body, nutrition, all that stuff, right? That was right up my alley. Did your parents want you to become a doctor? uh, You know, to be honest with you, yes, most Persian Persian parents 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 do want want you to become a doctor. A doctor or a lawyer. But I was very lucky because my parents were not very pushy in that aspect. They wanted me to have good grades. They wanted me to have an education, but they didn't really say, hey, you have to be a doctor. You have to be a lawyer. You know, so I kind of picked my own path and um, I'm very thankful for that. But yeah, I graduated from UCLA. When I was going there, um, I was working in Ventura actually at this gym. It was a private studio and we specialize in two-on-one training. And we had a lot of high-end clients because you're in Hollywood. You have a lot of, you know, Van Halen's wife trained there, a lot of actors and actresses trained there. Mm-hmm. And one of my claim to fame clients was Ernie Hudson from Ghostbusters. Okay. So for these, you don't know who Ernie Hudson is. Uh, he's the black actor from Ghostbusters. Yeah. 
And, and I mean, he's played in other movies too, but that's like the most well-known. Yeah. Movie. I remember <laughs> when we started dating and you told me that you're like, oh yeah, I've trained uh, celebrities. celebrities. And I'm like, who did you train? And she's like, the guy from Ghostbusters, <laughs> Ernie Hudson. I mean, first, you said Ernie Hudson. I'm like, who's Ernie Hudson? And then, and then, so we, st- we still if joke about it. If he's listening to this podcast, don't be offended, okay? So. How old is he now? I don't know. Probably like 60. No. High 60s, probably. No. You guys, look I mean, up Ernie know. Hudson. How old is Ernie Hudson? He's got to be close to 70. I mean, I was 19 or 20 when I was training him, and he was probably like maybe 20 years older than me or more, 25 years older than me. So, yeah, yeah, so he's got to be close to 70. Maybe. Yeah. Ernie Hudson. <laughs> now I'm curious. Huh? 77. 77. Dang. Okay. All right. Well, well shout aged, out to Ernie Hudson. He aged well. <laughs> he doesn't look his age. So. <laughs> but yeah, we still joke about it because I remember that was one of the things you're like, oh, yeah, I'm used to dealing with celebrities. <laughs> oh, my God. It was so funny. Yeah. yeah. But Obviously, culturally also it was a fit because of the fact that you were Persian, but you also grew up here. Yep. So very similar to myself. Yep. Um, I came when I was two. You came over when you were six. So for those that are wondering, um, for those of you who are, you know, the big, the, you know, fans of, of bodybuilding, y- you know, especially the Persians, they, they know that I can't, most of them know I can't read or write Farsi. I didn't go to school there. I didn't grow up there. You know, I was here. I was born in Kuwait, moved to the States when I was two. And the the biggest thing is that people will sit there and write in Farsi and I'm like, no, and unless I can press the little translate button and then I'll know. But you have like a first grade education. I do. I went to first grade in Iran and then my parents moved here yeah. right after. But even though we moved to California, we moved to Northern California. My dad's older brother lived there. So we actually, um, my mom, got a private tutor for my brother and I. So she would come to our home. For English or Farsi? For Farsi. Uh-huh. So I, I have up to third grade level oh. <laughs> of reading and writing, okay. which is not that high. I mean, I can make out words, but when people send me paragraphs, it takes me a really long time to read it. I can read it, but it just takes me a very long time. It's very so. difficult. Yeah. Okay. So, and then talking a little bit about what got you into bodybuilding? Um, so when I went to the gym, there was a lot of competitors mm-hmm. at Gold's Burnell, specifically in Northern California. And I peaked and got a friendship, you know, uh, formed a friendship with them and would go to their shows. And I didn't know anything about this world. I would watch and they were mostly men and I didn't even know any women competitors. And then the women would come out in the, their sparkly bikinis and all this stuff. And I was like, wow, I want to look like that. I think I can do that. I'm already in the gym two, three hours I can, I can do that. Just tell me what to do. And I, I would read magazines from cover to cover, Flex Magazine, Muscular Development. I would tear off the sheets. You know, I would pick anybody's brain that was in that world back then and, you know, just asking, hey, what do I need to eat? What do I need to do? And just that's what piqued my interest was just having friends that competed back then, mostly guys. And then I I found this division that girls actually compete in figure or, you know, bodybuilding, and I wasn't obviously big enough to do bodybuilding, but that's what really got me into it. And I think I was like 20 at the time when I went to my first show, all the NPC uh, level shows like Contra Costa, San Francisco. I used to go to all those shows and all just the watch. Bay Area shows. Yep, but we never ran into each other until mm-hmm. Vegas. Never. At yeah. the USA's. And then you turned around and finished chiropractic school. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the time we met, you were already done with chiropractic school. You were yep. already a chiropractor and you were competing. Yep. And then you, I guess, like kind of fell out of want, not wanting to be a chiropractor anymore. Because a lot of people who have been around for a while will realize that if you see my original FSC7 videos, Farinas was in it. Yep. She was working on Jay Cutler, Phil Heath, I don't know, did you work on Seth too? Yeah, Seth Ferrosi. Yeah, Seth. Steve Kuklo, but he wasn't in your um, video, but yeah. He was, um, no, he was in the second one, I believe. He was in Refined, not okay. not the Defined one, because there was two FSC7 videos. They're all on YouTube. Um, I, you know, we cut them up, because back in the day, we sell these videos. We spend tens of thousands of dollars to produce them, and then between the shooting, the travel, the editing, and then manufacturing the DVDs, and that's what we used to do. I mean, just like back in the day, they would sell the pictures. I Actually, I think the selling of the pictures is actually coming back a bit, a little bit. But I might still have a few copies at Nutrition Palace. So if you guys want the FST7 Define Refine, I have it at the store. So if you're near Campbell, you can go and grab a 
copy. They have both of them. If you, yeah, oh. if you still have a CD player, <laughs> I don't know. or DVD player, <laughs> DVD Be, player, or, or you could have to play it on like a PS5 or a PS4 yeah. that that can that takes DVDs. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, and we're actually going out there. Yeah. Next week, we are right after Christmas. We're going to be going out there. So a lot of people know that are from the Bay Area or just in Northern California in general that you eventually opened up the the Nutrition yeah. Palace store, which carries a bunch of different brands. I mean, you have Evagen, you have Sebum, you have First I mean, Form, First Form, Steel. First Form's a big one. Yeah, yeah, you have a lot of different yep. brands in there. I mean, it, it's a ton. Yeah, um, and uh, I believe you have Axe and Sledge. I mean, you have everybody. Yeah, I mean, there's most most of all yeah, the popular Gorilla brands. Mind. Yeah, you have yep. you have a ton. Yep, and so what? Um, one thing that I do want to share is because one of the questions I always get is, why did you stop practicing? Yep. And why did you switch over to opening up a nutrition store? So that's a very good question. So I did practice for a decade, 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, then I got, you know, we got married. I got pregnant right after I worked actually up until my ninth month of pregnancy. So I was still doing adjustments. Um, once I took my maternity leave, my job position kind of changed at the practice I was in. So I decided to not go back and take their offer um, because just of various reasons. And I just wanted to be at home and experience a stay at home mom thing. And also I didn't, was not fond ever of the amount of paperwork I had to submit for insurance because with third parties paying systems, it's, it's a little challenging. I loved treating people. I just didn't like all the back end stuff that we had to do to get reimbursed. So I, Took care of Cam up until five years when he started to go to kindergarten. I had a little bit more time. And I was already doing weight loss, fat transformations within my chiropractic practice. Yeah, you had a wellness. Yeah, I had a wellness practice. So yeah. we did everything. We did in-house training. We did in-house um, coaching. Mm -hmm. And I did chiropractic alongside that as well. And so I took the aspects that I liked that were non-insurance and I talked to you and I said, hey, this is a great location. It's right across the street from a gym that I used to train at. Yeah, Gold Campbell. Yeah, Gold Campbell. And now is American Barbell yep. Campbell. And I would, I saw this location and I brought up the idea to you of starting a supplement uh, store with apparel as well as bringing coaching into it. So that's how Nutrition Palace started five years ago. This March will be five years. Yeah, it'll be five-year anniversary. Yeah, and so we, as Hani mentioned, we do sell all different brands, apparel, mm -hmm. fitness apparel, as well as services, which is coaching. And right now, actually, if you're interested, we are doing. Oh, you're trying to use my my I'm podcast just, as a I'm plugging agent. People. Oh, I see how it is. <laughs> I'm just letting people know we do have a New Year's transformation because it is that time of year. We do it every single year. Yes, and we do. it is a amazing program. We design Custom meal plan, custom nutrition, custom supplementation, all for you. No two programs are the same. You work with our NASM certified coaches. All my well, staff Well, I want to talk certified. to you about that. So yeah. before you go into infomercial mode, yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. Yes. You have been doing coaching for a very long time. Yep. You've also were, used to be a personal trainer in yep. person. Yep. Okay, now you are the exclusive personal trainer. I shouldn't say exclusive, but you are the main personal trainer to our son, our 10-year-old yes. son, Cam. Yes. But he comes in and trains with me as well. Yes. But the other thing that I want to add to this is the fact that when you came to me about, hey, look, I don't know if I want to go back to chiropractic. And I said, what are the two? What are the things you want to do? And you said, one of two things. You said, I'd like to either open a gym or I would like to open a supplement store. And I said, look, with the situation in the Bay Area, just it's super, super densely populated in terms of like, there's not a lot of new buildings. There's not a lot of new places to be able to build a gym. And I'm running the day to days of Evagen along with my team and the folk. It's, it's going to have, you're going to need a bigger staff. I think that the supplement store would be easier mm -hmm. to manage yeah. with just a couple of other people yeah. versus having a gym because. As anybody knows who grew up or has lived in Silicon Valley where we're from, mm -hmm. we didn't choose to live there. We just had our parents happen to be there. Because even though you and I met in Vegas, we actually lived only 10, 15 minutes away from each yeah. other. Um, I lived in Las Gatas. You were living in San Jose. And when we met, it, it just kind of became serendipitous. It was just, I think that when the, I always wanted to say, hey, look, it would be great to have a gym, yeah. right? But you had American Barbell, which again used to be gold, um, and you turn around and you have 49er Fit, 
and then you'd have to kind of create something. There are some smaller gyms like Wesca. Yeah. Tori had Wesca. Um, he still does down in downtown San Jose. But for somebody like me who wanted to be able to create something, I eventually had to, you know, we had to move here where I have, you know, the um, the gym here, the Evigen gym here. But it was very, very difficult. And I'm so glad, I want to touch on this. I'm so glad that we didn't have a gym because right afterwards we hit COVID. Yep. And, and everything all closed. the gyms yep. shut down. Yeah, especially in California because it was an extended shutdown, yes. right? It was like a year and a half. Right. And gyms had to get super creative and create outdoor spaces like Santa Cruz Power and Fitness. They had a whole outdoor They had to move everything outdoors, spend a ton of money, a, yeah. move it out. Camille and Chris uh, took Santa Cruz Power and Fitness. And shout out to them because we will see them when we go out to the Bay Area next yep. week. Um, they had to spend a ton of money and had to work around all of these different really really tight parameters and yep. for a while they weren't even allowed to do anything and no. then when they were it was move everything outside everybody who has to wear a mask i remember driving over there and training over there yeah. because I, there was nowhere else to yep. go yep. because it was very limited on where you had you were able to train outside yep. because most places like American Barbell, 49er Fit, they didn't have outside areas. They didn't. And it was, they didn't have the capacity or didn't want the liability or to even move their equipment outside because of the wear and tear of, you know, the weather. So yeah, it was definitely a blessing that we did not open a gym because it would have been right in that same time frame where I opened the store in March of 2019 and then we shut down March of 2020. So if right. we would have opened a gym at that time, it would have we would have been shut down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Disastrous. And a yeah. lot of, a lot of gyms ended up going out of business because of that. Yeah, a lot of them closed. Yep. Even, even the smaller training studios. I mean, I remember we were giving money to um, certain ones that yep. were trying to raise money on their GoFundMe pages yeah. just to stay in business. Yeah. And so it was we, very we, sad. It was, yeah. it was. And so we ended up uh, deciding and you specifically say, Hey, look, I totally understand. I would love to open up a gym, but you know, the, the economy in the Silicon Valley, the expense, the cost of manpower. And especially the level that we'd want to do it. Yeah. Right. It yeah. wouldn't be a small scale. It yeah. would be a grand scale. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that's why a lot of people who used to ask me, why don't you open up a gym? Why don't you, because we live in the most expensive area in the country, um, between that and New York and, you know, certain micro pockets of Miami and LA. It, you know, Silicon Valley in general, the cost of living is absolutely insane. And it has just gone up exponentially in the last 20 years. So when you're dealing with tech, that that was always one of the main, um, you know, difficult uh, parameters that you had to, to kind of work around. Yep. But so you open up the store and we're able to stay open through COVID. Yeah. Again, you'd, you'd walk things out, out in, in, in the parking lot, hand deliver them because we had so many different things we had to work around. Oh yeah. I would do deliveries to people's home. We just had to restructure everything because mm -hmm. we did close for a brief period of time mm -hmm. um, with people not coming in the store. So we got really creative with the way we put content out, mm -hmm. the way we did sales. We we had curbside pickups so people wouldn't come in the store. Mm -hmm. I would hand deliver them in my GTR. I would be delivering all around. <laughs> yeah, you driving Silicon around. Valley. The, yeah, everybody just, knew the Evagen GTR. Yeah, I just show up at their house, giving them, you know, dropping off contactless. You know, we wouldn't would knock yeah, the door drop. or anything. I'd be wearing gloves and a mask. It was a wild time. So anyways. We, well, especially there <laughs> because they were literally going from business to business. People didn't realize. Yeah. Other parts of the country, like obviously Texas was very open. Florida, Florida. very open. Other yeah. parts of the country were very open. Um, even Southern California and Orange County was super open. Um, Orange County, not, not no, Los Angeles Orange County. County. Yes, yeah. yes. And a lot of that area was, was much more open. But uh, Silicon Valley specifically, I mean, we had people coming, you know, from the county door to door to the businesses there. But eventually, like I said, many other supplement stores also closed. Yeah. And it was just, it's sad, like business in general, like there's restaurants and just, it's just crushed so many people. Yeah. And um, going back into it now, as, as you're, working on this remotely since we moved to Texas. And I know that that's also very difficult because you're like me, you're a control freak. Yeah. You can, bit. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and doing now this transformation, this beginning transformation, beginning of the year transformation, six week challenge, you're giving them training, nutrition, going over all of how, how to use all of their pre-workout supplements, their protein supplements, all of their fat burners putting together. Um, and then at the end, 
They're going to be picking some winners yep. to be able to give out some prizes, some cash prizes, as well as product prizes. Yep. And that, just so the people know, I am involved with that. People are asking me, are you involved with that? Yes. Farron is the main contact person that oversees it with her staff that she makes sure that they all get NASM certified. Yep. So everyone's getting NASM certified. If they've been hired recently, then they have an amount of time to get NASM certified. But all the current ones, they've been there for more than a, several months, are all already NASM certified. And then they are doing the check-ins with the in-body. So the cool thing about it is you're involved in that. Yep. And I help you if there's, you know, sticking points or you need me to review anything, sure. but you've been doing it for such a long time and you've been doing such a great job because again, for many years, even before you opened up Nutrition Palace, you were working on transformations. And the cool thing about it is also that even when you're working um, full-time as a chiropractor and you had the wellness, you were checking blood work and you're able to do that mm -hmm. in the state of California when you were doing all of those things where you could actually write for blood work and yep. you can write for MRIs and x-rays as a chiropractor in yep. the state of California. And I know state to state, it's a bit different, but in California, that is a part of, you know, being able to run, run the diagnostic portion, right? Yeah, absolutely. That was definitely within our scope as, you know, portal of entry physicians, we were called. So yeah, yeah. it was something that I did and I loved and still to this day, love helping people, you know, and you do very detailed contest prep with like elite athletes where I find my joy is helping regular people, housewives, you know, regular, mm -hmm. regular moms and dads or, Anybody that's willing to put in the work to change their physique, it's very rewarding, very fulfilling for me. Yeah, I know I know how much you love doing it and how you like to be able to make sure that they're going over everything. Um, how much of that intensity, though, is there because of our relationship? And now you've created even more of a passion for it, for going over those, you know, those those crazy details now. I mean, yeah, 100 percent. I, I watch what you do and it's on a completely different level, right? Because most people that are have family obligations or normal daily life, they're not going to put all their focus on training and diet and stuff. So I've learned to kind of balance that out, you know, the intensity of what you do things at to the intensity of what my clients would like to be at. And it's just like finding a middle ground. But yeah, it's definitely more balanced approach what we do. <laughs> do. <laughs> well, that's cool, because we're going to be able to see a lot of people there. I know you and me and Marfit. Yes. So I'm just going to touch on that real quick because that is something that's coming up. Marfit is um, a gentleman who's been, you know, killing it in the game from the in the Bay. 20 years. Yeah. And I knew him from Gold's Burnell. He was a trainer there and he's made and carved such a niche for himself. He's called the cake maker. He's, she trains. Why do they call him the cake maker? Because the cake is the booty and he's the booty <laughs> connoisseur in the Bay Area. Okay, so, I did not know that. Yeah, so um, he, I know, it's funny. Actually, a chiropractor reached out to me that I work with in California and he said, so is this a... Um, bakery and a, a gym and I said no it's just that he's the called the cake maker because that's that right yeah. so people get confused but anyways he's been doing this for 20 years he's got an amazing following with the you know ladies in, in California and the community and so we are pairing up it's going to be a one-of-a-kind tag team kind of workout with the principles of Hani Rambod the principles of Marfit and I have so many people already in my DMs that have signed up it's space is limited so if you want to attend we ha need to have you on our uh, guest list so, so RSVP RSVP for We're Sure. Where do DM, they do that? Nutrition Palace. The um, IG? It's, yep, the okay. IG. Is, so it's nutrition underscore palace underscore, and that's my ID, and it goes directly in DM, and I answer all of it. So Awesome. Yeah. So we're going to go out there. We're going to see a lot of people. Yep. We're going to go have some Persian food. We're going to go to Nagin because yep. we love Nagin, and yep. it's right across the street from uh, Nutrition Palace. For all of you that see all of my Persian kebab content, you can go to Nagin for the fresh stuff. And then if you don't want the spray, you know, you, you want to get, get mega the, fit. You get mega fit. So you don't get mega fat. <laughs> so you don't get mega fat. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. Well, let's talk about this year because that's what we really wanted to do. Um, this year, it's the end of 2023 now. We just went through the Olympia. Uh, we had a crazy year this year. We had a couple of clients who ended up having are now having babies. <laughs> I know, super cool. So the, pro, happy. the procreator <laughs> strikes again. But uh, yeah, as much as I like to take credit for it, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Good, thank goodness. Yeah, 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 yeah. That way either. Yeah. But but it, but uh, um, but let's talk about that. Let's start off with with Derek, yep. right? Derek 
if he would have done the Arnold last year or this year, earlier this year, because right now we're, it's, it's going on, we're in the second week of December shooting this podcast. If he would have done the Arnold last year, 99.9% chance Jelson wouldn't have got pregnant, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then obviously his body was rested yeah. and allowed him more chance to win the Olympia. Yep. But winning the Olympia is amazing, but also having a child is amazing. So I'm so happy for him because she's about to give birth any, any day, day, any day now, yeah. any day now. Her delivery date was supposed to be the first week of January. Mm -hmm. And um, they're saying now she's pretty much almost to full term. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she's like, I'm walking extra. I spoke to her yesterday yeah. and she's like, I'm doing extra walking. I'm doing this. I'm doing like whatever they, the, yeah. the, the women t are out there telling her to do. Eat spicy food. Eat spicy food. Jump up and, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> jump up and down. Actually, I think I have heard of that. I don't know if it's legit or Bounce not. Bounce on the ball. Do, yeah. Is that is that a thing? No, I don't think so. They, they tell you like eat spicy food, move a lot, you know, yeah. like other stuff. That's yeah, she's not like, G-rated, I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so so she's she's like, look, I'm ready. She's like, I'm waddling. Yeah. I, I, you know. She's at that stage where she just wants like, the baby out because it's not comfortable anymore. No. You can't sleep. You can't lay down. You, it's hard to get up. You know, there's constant pressure on your bladder, so you have to pee a lot, you know, or you feel like you need to pee a lot. So, yeah, I get it. She just wants the baby out. But they're yeah. going to be such great parents, both of them. Yeah. They're, she's amazing. I love her. And obviously, yeah. I love Derek. And I'm super excited for them and can't wait to meet little baby Evie. Yeah, baby Evie's <laughs> coming. Yeah. And then when Seabum heard about them, having the baby, getting ready yeah. to have the baby. And, or I should say just that Justin was pregnant. Yep. It was funny because he hit me up and he's like, I want that. Yeah. And I started laughing and I go, well, you know how it works. You also want fries with that? Yeah. You, <laughs> you want a large fries? Like you got to go ahead and order it yeah. off the picture menu. Yeah. But it was funny because he mentioned, and I said, be careful what you wish for. Yeah. And then literally several months later, Courtney's pregnant. Well, you are the procreator for a reason. Yeah, I know, but that's not the reason. But <laughs> but I do feel that I think that with the programs I do put in place, yep. it does help keep their system running, obviously, Absolutely. because Absolutely. I have two Olympians, uh, two, you know, two Mr. Olympias now yeah. that are both having children. Yep. And uh, it's, I'm, it's a blessing. Absolutely. And I'm just Absolutely. talking about amazing parents. I cannot wait to see you know, Courtney and, um, and Chris's baby, like they're going to be great parents. Yeah. They are going to be amazing parents. They're so loving, yeah. you know, they love each other and they just have a very strong foundation to be just wonderful parents. So super excited for them too. Yeah. Well, Hadi has three children. We got to see them in Dubai. First time I got to meet his wife as yeah. well as his three kids. Yeah. So you had Mohammed and you have Serena and I mean, so he's got two boys and a girl. Yeah. And it's funny because Nadia is his daughter. Not yes, yep. Nadia. And um, what's what's funny is that a lot of times in the past, a lot of the bodybuilders had to wait to have ch you know children yep. after their career was over. Yeah. And sometimes they didn't have kids. But the cool thing about it is that uh, we got to meet Hadi's kids. And they're so into it too. They I are. mean, Muhammad is like he's such a fan. Yeah. And he trains hard and he just was soaking it up. And you know, the inner I had never traveled internationally with you. I've been to a lot of local within the United States. Expos, Olympia, Olymp Arnold, yeah. Uh, I've been to LA Fit. Exactly. All of those I've been to, but the international support, the fans, it's just on a whole other level. And to be around that and him too, you know, he was just having, I was walking the expo with Cam and him and he was having the time of his life because people recognize him. They recognize Cam. You're talking about Mohammed. And, yeah, Mohammed. Which uh, is? Hadi Chupan's son. Right. Yes. And well, he's, he's about 13. what? 13? Yep. Yeah. 13. 13 years old. And he's so lovely. Like he, Cam and him hit, hit it off, you know, Cam's 10, but they hit it off and they were doing all the things there together. They had this boxing thing where I don't know, they were just having fun. So it was yeah. really cool to hang out with Hotties. And they don't wife. see the thing is Cam doesn't speak Farsi. And no. that's one of the biggest regrets we have is the yes. fact that we should have put him in there. And I still think we should put yeah. him in school. I speak Farsi conversationally and it's, I butcher it, but in, and there's such big fans in, you know, a bodybuilding, the Iranian fans, I think them in Brazil are the biggest bodybuilding probably, fans yeah. when it comes to countrywide. India too, probably. Yeah. 
I think India, yeah, because of the population and probably a percentage of it. But I'm talking about like hardcore fans, yes. right? Hardcore fans. 100%. And so um, the amount of conversation that they had that they didn't understand each other, but because they're kids, yeah. they're able to they kind of figure it out. They figure it out, yeah. right? And then being able to do that was really, really fun. Yeah. I think that also um, he, you know, Muhammad, his son is really getting into bodybuilding because he didn't. They had, there was some kind of issue with, he was wrestling. And yes. then I think that Hadi said that he broke his nose in the middle of a wrestling match or, or practice or something yeah, like that. And something just, like that. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, look, I want to start focusing on more bodybuilding. Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, he's already at that age. I mean, I started when I was 13. Cameron already does a little bit of lifting. He doesn't obviously do bodybuilding per se, but he's doing stuff where he's training and he's also being able to do um, a lot of uh, agility stuff mm -hmm. because he loves to play flag football. But for those of you who have kids out there, I mean, just let them lean into whatever they love to do. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's the thing. As long as they're active. Yep. You know? Yep. Yeah, and but it was really cool to see Hadi's uh, family. Mm -hmm. um, we got to go on a boat with them. And well, don't forget, we had Fuda, ride. too. We had Mohammed Fuda, which yep. was really Cameron and him hit it off. Fuda bought him a burger, which is the way to Cam's heart, if anybody wants to know, <laughs> and these amazing cookies out in Dubai. So we got to go on the boat with Mohammed Fuda, his uh, wife, yep. um, Hadi's whole family, some of his friends, Phil and Cherie, yep. his wife. Yep. It was such a wonderful night. I mean, yeah. it was so cool to be there because we don't normally get to hang out with them outside of a show setting, which That's is right. super stressful usually, right? Because you're there to do a job. But this time we got to hang out with their family and let our, the, our families kind of bond. And it was super cool. And Dubai was just beautiful. Yeah, so. we got to go with uh, Phil and Cherie to uh, the Desert Dunes. Yeah, that was fun. Saw some wild camels, mm -hmm. went and did some duning. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. And then we did the boat ride with the whole team. And then we had just, I mean, it was, it was really good. Because like you said, it kind of worked out to be a perfect storm. Because we had, I wasn't going to go to Dubai. Because uh, I had just been there. Yep. When uh, Hottie, two months before, right, right with Hadi, a couple months before that, before the prep, I mean during the prep, and then what happened was the Dubai muscle was going to happen, but it was going to be during Thanksgiving. And everyone's like, "Are you going to go?" And I said, "No, I'm not going to leave my family for Thanksgiving." Yeah. Well, when we talked about it, and you're like, "Well, Cam's off school. Why don't we consider going?" And I would said, "Would Would you really like to go?" And he's like, "Yeah, it would be fun because we, you know, you'd never been to Dubai. No. He'd never been to Dubai." No. So, and it was an amazing experience. I mean, yes. it was a very long flight back and forth, but it was a hundred percent worth it. It's so cool. Yeah, and yeah. we got to hang out with Rudy Panada, we Eduardo yes. Panada, yes. and so that part of our extended family of yes. you know our Italian cousins that are out there. <laughs> They're, they're such a wonderful family yeah. and any and we did a few dinners with them yeah. and cam just loves rudy that's like his grandpa yeah, yeah. you know third grandpa <laughs> yeah well because rudy is not just a lovable guy and just such a nice caring guy but he is a person that again you know he speaks broken english um i actually think he speaks really good english i just don't think he likes to speak english because he's a perfectionist yeah just like his machines yeah. he likes to perfect everything he's doing but when we speak, I mean, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, he'll turn around and he'll, um, you know, say, oh, my English is not. No, dude, English is fine. I yeah. mean, you can definitely. And But again, uh, the caring, the dinners, the going out as, yeah. as a group, Phil being with Panada now is great. Um, you know, seeing everybody together was awesome. Yeah. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a really cool experience. And I feel that being able to, for the first time after all these years, going into the portion of the family, because again, it's so hard to just bring Hadi over, yeah. let alone his family. So his family was allowed to get visas to come into Dubai. So that was great. And being able to connect there. Yeah. Um, there's very few places um, between there. And I believe um, from what I heard uh, Turkey yeah. is another spot, which actually I want to go to. Yeah. Um, so shout out to Turkey. I heard that it's got some amazing islands and some different areas. So we're going to definitely go to Turkey at some point. You want to go to Turkey? To. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So I think we want to go to Turkey. So if anybody that wants to go and meet us up in Turkey, let me know. Maybe we'll do a seminar or something out in Turkey. Um, but yeah, so again, it, it was a crazy, crazy year. 
but I think that the um, you know the hair implants aside, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> because see, bum went there. You might come back with a head. Urs <laughs> Urs already tried. He was talking shit, you know, about the hair transplant. He's like, why didn't I get a hair transplant? Because I have a lovely head, Urs. I don't need the hair transplant. See, bum, different story. He needed a hair transplant. He went out. Dom, Ian, all those guys. That's all right. They don't have this beautiful. Scalp. Scalp to be able to, <laughs> I, if I don't want to need to cover this up. <laughs> he wants to share it with the world. That's right. <laughs> That's, That's right. Well, you told me when I, you know, I used to have hair when I met you. Yeah. And um, I mean, it was hanging on by thread, but you had. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Is, this is why I didn't know if it was a good idea bringing her on. <laughs> it was one of those. But, um, you know, looking into the entire year, I want to just touch on a couple of the main aspects of this year. It was really difficult because obviously you guys all know who are listening to this that Seabum tore his lat 10 weeks out and to the point where we didn't know if he was going to be able to do the show or not. Yeah. Highly stressful situation. Yeah. So that was going on. Um, and then also then Courtney getting pregnant and then, mm-hmm. you know, they kept that uh, kind of hush hush because, they you know, it, it's Chris and, and Courtney are very private individuals anyways, but they're tr- trying to focus on being able to prep and being able to try to make the best version of themselves because everything up until that point was going so well. But as I always say it, God gives you um, different things to be able to create abilities to grow, right? Emotionally, spiritually, um, physically, Mm -hmm. all of those things. So you have to lean into those things Mm -hmm. and understand them. Mm -hmm. And he did. And it was a very, very difficult prep, but it all worked out. And I feel that uh, with Derek also, you know, the situation with him and Hottie, that was also very difficult too. Yeah. Because when you look at it, it was so close. Very close. It was so close. And everybody wants me to talk about it. And I will go into more and more detail about this. But it was very close. And I knew going into it, it was going to be close. Yeah. And I felt that also during prejudging and the finals and everything else, it, it, it was going to, you know, it yeah. could have went either way. Absolutely. And um, and I think Tyler did a good job breaking it down, and he put a lot of emphasis into these videos that he put out, Tyler Mannion, uh, vice president. And, he, again, he talked about somebody who grew up in this industry. Oh, yeah. He's, Tyler, yeah. you know, was younger than Cameron when I met Tyler back in the day. Mm-hmm. And so he was also trying to make a consorted effort to explain things. Now, not everybody will always agree with everybody. Yeah. But at the end of the day, he's explaining where his head was and the other judges were when they had made their decision. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely I recommend going out and seeing it. But I feel that because of what happened this year and going into next year, I definitely want to be able to bring you in more often mm-hmm. and being able to talk a little bit about the different things that go on Absolutely. to give a little bit of perspective. Mm-hmm. And also because I feel like sometimes with some of the women that are going to want, and I'm, I'm going to want to bring more women into yep. the truth podcast, because I feel like as much as the sport isn't as quote unquote big on the women's side, it's just as important. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, um, it's the same reason why I brought Sid Gillian into Evigen. Yeah, You know, Sid was a multi-year champion yeah. when I brought her in, yeah. but it was because I found out that she was a customer mm-hmm. and we brought her in. But I feel that some of the companies need to make an investment into more of the women's side. Absolutely. And it's one of those things that you don't understand. The women are just as important, if not more important, because what happens is if you look at the true numbers mm-hmm. of who, who's competing in the shows, the women's side is, is huge. Yeah. But I feel like they don't get as much love as they deserve because of the fact that they don't seem to just get as much of that notoriety yeah. and in, 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 the comp- in the competitive space. Yeah. So um, we're going to bring Sid in, okay. talk about that a little bit, you know, uh, seven-time champ. Yeah, and she's just a lovely person, so yeah. educated, such a class act. You know, she's yeah. so multifaceted. It's not just her being an amazing competitor. She's just an amazing person. So. Yeah, she really yeah. is, and she's somebody who is driven, works hard, got to meet her parents. Oh, her mom is so lovely. Yeah, yeah. She really, you can tell, you know, the apple doesn't fall from, from the tree with that one because she comes from an amazing family, and I feel that... Um, she can help set some of the tone, but even some of the amateurs and some of the other people that we've had in even here uh, with everything that was going on with the Mr. Olympia competition 
coming out. And then also the other thing that I got to do is balance out a bit of the competition side, but with the influencer side, with my relationship with Young LA. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that also has really given me a deeper appreciation for where the influencers sit in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And now a lot of the influencers are now wanting to compete because of the fact that they see a C bum or, you know, cause it's a platform. Yeah. And I feel that number one, everybody should compete because of discipline. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that or? I agree with that. I don't think everyone can compete because it's very hard. You know, it's, it's, you have to dig deep and sacrifice. Like you said, not your family members may not understand it. Your ex-girlfriends were like, why can't you just eat pizza? Right. Like it's hard. Right. It's hard to deal with that day in, day out, but it is the number one thing that teaches you discipline and then it, you can apply it in every aspect of your life. So if you have the, you know, the inkling to want to compete and you think you can do it, definitely you should try it at least once. Yeah. yeah. And I feel that even if you don't compete and get on that, that stage, then maybe start off with something like a transformation mm -hmm. because that will give you the discipline. And then if you feel like you're comfortable with that, then go and add that to your kind 100%. of hundred percent baby steps because yes. it's, it's, it's a very extreme sport. Do you agree? Yes. It's not, it's not. No, but if you're young, <laughs> it, you're more likely to be able to go through boot camp. Yeah. If you're older and you're like, look, I don't need to get on stage. I have a career. I have this, I have that. Well then do transformation. Mm -hmm. But if you're someone who's younger, get on stage because it's going to make you a best version of yourself because you're going to have that discipline. It's going to help you with your relationship, your personal relationships. It's going to help you also with your professional relationships, like people that you work around you. So whether you're an entrepreneur and you want to use it for content or whether you want to work and become an entrepreneur and you're working for a company, it's going, that discipline is going to make you the best version of yourself because what it does is it keeps you accountable. Yeah. A hundred percent. I could, I could also play devil's advocate and say it can hurt relationships because it's so self-focused. Right. And so, um, you know, everything's centered around what you're doing. But that's why you need to have a good support system. Exactly. But if somebody is not willing to do that and give you the latitude of having that in your life, then maybe they shouldn't be with you. Yeah. Because how many people do you see, uh, if you really pay attention to couples that are not bodybuilders, mm -hmm. right? You have a woman who is with a professional bodybuilder and then you look at her and go, wow, she doesn't look like she belongs here. But it's not because physically she belongs here, but emotionally uh -huh. she's vested. Yep. She's helping them with their food. They're helping them with their prep. They're having, you know, the having to balance it out because again, relationships aren't always about balance mm -hmm. because it's give and take mm -hmm. at different points of the relationship, just like you and I, mm -hmm. right? You come in, you help out with hottie. You help out with all these people that come into town mm -hmm. when Seabum was here. Um, when Derek's here, it, we go back and forth on how, you know, how we have to control you know, the narrative when it comes to, hey, uh, Cam has some different uh, sporting events. You take care of all of those things mm -hmm. because you allow me to do what I need to do. Mm -hmm. But it's a give and take thing. Yeah. So, but again, it's not always about 50-50. It's going to be 70-30. And then, it, then you have to turn around and make it 70-30 the other way yeah. to help balance that out. Yeah. And that's a hard thing to do. Relationships are hard. 100%. They're, They're very difficult. hard. Yep. But yeah, to you, to your point, it's just seeing, I've always viewed it as I respect what you do. I know what it takes and I try to fill in the gaps where you need me, you know, whether it's at home to do everything for Cam or to hold down the household while you travel, go see your athletes or when they come into town, I need to prep their food or do whatever, whatever it takes. That's what I'm going to do to help you be successful and be, do not worry about anything else. Right. But it's also because you appreciate what I do and you appreciate the sport. 100%. You're the certain same person who would rather go sit and watch at the nationals where I'm going to be like, Hey, I'm going to be at the booth or I'm going to turn around and have conversations yeah, because I love the sport. You I do. love watching it. You, you love know? watching I'm a fan it. of the sport first and foremost. Yeah. And I know the level of sacrifice every single person makes to be on that stage. So I respect it. Yeah. And I feel that because of that, that's what allows you to have a great relationship like you and I have in terms of this, like, like being able to learn that balancing thing yeah. because of that nature. But Again, it's not always perfect. It's not always, you know, unicorns and rainbows, no. you know, <laughs> like anything else. But I do feel that when it comes to the athletes, 
we always try to put them first. Absolutely. And that's that 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 was the thing that makes it huge, huge, huge. Um, 2024, a lot of the questions are what are our goals? What's my personal goal? And part of it is also just being able to expand on what we've done for 2023, which mm-hmm. is we have the gym up and running mm-hmm. so that the athletes can come in and we can be able to have a dedicated space. Um, you've been training here. Yeah. Uh, Cam's been here. Yep, love it. The yeah. equipment is top notch, obviously, Panada equipment. And it's just an amazing set of equipment that you have in there for every body part. So I love coming in here. Yeah. And I think that we're going to continue to be able to build out a schedule of what we're doing with the gym. We have some big announcements about when we're going to be able to bring some people in. Um, we have some different dates where we're going to be open to the to public. Yeah. And uh, it's exciting. again, RSVP, um, some just some different things on that uh, on that front. Um, we're going to be shooting some more content for the FST7 app for 2024 updates on that. So uh, we've been doing those regular updates. Now we're going to continue to keep building that out. Um, coaching. So that's something that's super exciting because I do have the coaching wait list and we're going to be starting to contact everybody starting in January about that on my side. So that's going to be obviously way different than what you're doing with uh, Nutrition Palace, but it's going. that's a transformation challenge, six weeks transformation challenge. For my personal coaching, where everybody keeps asking me, what is that all about? I am created a waiting list on my honeyrambot.com page for those of you that want coaching from me and my team. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a couple different options, and that information is going to be sent out to you guys in January. So now that we've kind of caught our breath from being traveling in Dubai, having the Olympia, getting through, uh, doing all the things that we've been doing for Evagen, now I'm going to be focusing back on some of the coaching aspects of uh, my career. And, uh, you know, I think having the Nationals here now in Texas, yeah. it, it's going to be here for at least the next couple of years. And being there last year, getting back into not just coaching competitors, but also some of you out there that are hitting me up about just lifestyle and just doing their own personal journey of getting to the best version of themselves or getting back to their best version of themselves. If you're interested in that, go sign up. It's just a, a wait list, and then you'll get hit up with all the different options that are going to be coming up in January that we've been working on. So, again, 2024. Um, and then last but not least, we're going to talk about Hadi Chopin for a second. Mm-hmm. Um, Hadi is doing the Arnold Classic. So I do want to announce that. He is doing the Arnold Classic. Now, there is one little tidbit or caveat to that, which is obviously he's still got to get all of the paperwork all finished up for his visa because this would be his first time doing a show in America outside of the Olympia. So this is something that we've been working on. So we're just, you know, needing to complete that, but, um, it looks good. We're working on it. It's not completed yet, but he is preparing for the 2024 Arnold classic. So it's going to be something where, um, very exciting. Yeah. And uh, he's very hungry yep. and he wants to be able to go out there and uh, show the best version of himself and just continue to improve. Absolutely. So, again, it, it's been a, a, an amazing 2023. Congratulations to Derek Lunsford again on winning, being the champ champ. The champ champ. Champ champ. <laughs> 212 <laughs> as well as the open champion. And uh, it's, it's just been awesome. Uh, I just want to say thank you to the Evagen also staff to make this a great year. Uh, the community of athletes, the Evagen Elite athletes, as well as just just all, all the bodybuilding and all the fans. I know you guys all have a choice of where you spend your money. I want to say thank you because you guys are showing us love on that end. And that allows us to bring on more athletes and be able to give you guys a lot of that free content that you see on the Evagen channel, on my channel, being able to give back to you guys when it comes to these podcasts with staff and the editing and uh, these, you know, the setups, everything that we do. So, uh, you guys do have a choice, but when you do t- tend to spend your money with us, we put it back into all of the content that we share with you for free. So thank you for doing that. Make sure you like, you subscribe, you share. Um, let me know, if, you know, what are the things you want to hear from Miss Nas? I mean, we, I mean, we could have done this for hours and hours and hours, but I know that you got to go pick up Cam soon yeah. and you got so much going on. Did you have fun? 
I had a great time. Thank you for having me. I look forward to coming finally on convincing again. you. Yes, yes, yes. I definitely got the jitters out, so I will be good. So hopefully, I wasn't too too bad. Today. No, you did amazing. <laughs> I told you you would. You do it. You do a great job. Of everything you you know you put your mind to. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we have a lot of a lot of stories that we could be sharing. <laughs> oh my god, too many. I've been with you for sixteen years. Yeah, so yeah, many stories. Yeah. So guys, thank you guys so much. Thank you for listening. Honey Rambod. Miss Nose. And that's the truth. <laughs>